What's up, everybody? Hopefully you enjoyed <clears throat> Halloween Havoc last night. I thought they actually had a lot of really good moments in there, and the matches we expected to steal the show and be really good stole the show and were really good. They did, you know, their purpose. There was some sketchy stuff mixed in there, and I had to see Quincy and Lash. And again, like I said, respect Lash. Athleticism, all that, I just it starts my head, which I'm pretty sure is what she's going for, actually. So congratulations to her. But Quincy, again, not impressed, no impact, hurts my head. And that castle that they were all at, the toxic attraction was in, never mind their acting skills, kind of looked oddly familiar like Dexter's, but it could just be me. I don't know. But <clears throat> overall, as a night, though, again, even with you know, some stuff in there, we were going, eh, it was still fairly... You know, good night all together for NXT. I thought it was a great success for them. I thought they started out properly with the five-man ladder match for the North American title with Nathan Frazier, Oro Mensa, Von Wagner, Carmelo Hayes, and Wesley, and of course, Trick Williams, not far behind. He just looks... <clears throat> Anyone that knows me, like here in North Carolina in the area, or lives in my neighborhood, knows who Lou is. And maybe one day I'll get a picture of him, but you could pretty much flip spots with the two of them, because it Lou's bigger, way bigger. Just reminds me of him. And I like Lou, don't like Trick. But I thought they did a really good job with the ladder match. I thought they put together a good one. All the fans out there freaking out, saying that, you know, Vaughn hit that fan with the ladder. The fan got out the way. Almost hit him. <laughs> Definitely came close. Almost hit him. You know, doesn't count. And, you know, minus that. You know, one little thing that everyone picked out was complaining about. I and mean, I thought they put together a fairly really good, you know, a good ladder match, all things considered. You know, I mean, they always deliver with their ladder matches. And the talent that was in there definitely helped out and delivered. And again, everyone got their spot. That was the big part. Everyone got to show what they could do and still looked strong at times. And everyone that's saying they do better in AEW, just be super kicks and high spots all the time instead of mixed in. And I did call Wes running up the ladder. I saw the way he was angled, like, Hannah, what? He got to come run here in a second. And then he did. But it was really, you know, a good match. Good way to start it off. And again, I'm glad for Wesley because making Carmelo a three time champion really didn't make any sense in my head. You know, why? What would they gain from him being a three time champion this fast? I'm sure he's not going to be out of the picture or he's going to move on to the big title. But, you know, it wouldn't have made sense for him to get it. I don't think Vaughn's ready yet. And the other two, again, people need more work all together. And Nathan Fraser, super talented, but they all need work. And I think it was the right move. It was a good call, especially after everything that's happened this year. You know, he did have a pretty rough year when you look back at it. So good for Wes. I think it'll be good. I think he could work with, you know, one of those guys that could work with everybody if he has to and still have good matches, which is a talent to have in and of itself. So, Definitely started off with a bang. He definitely felt going, you know, Vaughn pressing him over his head and throwing him from ring to announce table, no matter what, bouncing off of that couldn't feel good. But he came back and got the win. It was very successful. And the good way to start out the night, again, I figured they were going to do it with that. Because uh, just because what it was started to show off on a super high note because they needed it for some of the things that happened in there. But overall, good. I like the casket matches as well. I'm okay with Apollo Crews beating Grayson Waller in. I'm okay with it continuing because technically he can't close the lid if he goes through the lid. Technically. And he goes in and slams, you know, closes the door. Now closes the lid of the casket. Can't do that. Match isn't over. Uh, minus that, I thought they put together a pretty decent match. We both know they're very talented. I've seen a lot of people throwing shade at Apollo and the gimmick and all that stuff, how unbelievable it is. And all, but, I mean, at least they're trying. So at least he's trying something. Anyone that remembers years ago when he got called up, he literally had like 10 minutes in NXT and then he floundered on the main roster because he was athletic, but he didn't have anything. Like, they never had time to build on his character or anything. They called him right up. I was complaining back then that I thought it was early in a bad move. Then took him years to finally come up with you have the gimmick with Commander Aziz, and now here he is back down in NXT. So as long as they move on from it and go back in the direction it was going before, I'm okay with it. You know, because any kind of character development is still character development, which he didn't do at all before. 
And I thought they put on a good match regardless of that. And that's the important thing. They put on a good match. It was safe. No one got hurt. And that's kind of the point of all of it. So I'll give it a successful mark, even though, you know, there was some stuff in there that none of us liked. You know, you can't please everyone. But the gimmick thing, I mean, it's the first time he's had anything. Really, it's the first time he's had anything. So, you know, minus that short stint with Commander Aziz. Very short, because look how quick he was off the TV. Like, it just wasn't it. And he's trying something. And that's always the point. I mean, they could turn around into something really good. Back to the direction where they were going before all this stuff with the eyes. But, you know, you got to give it a shot. I'm still not sold on the gimmick at all. I just know he's talented in the ring, and I want to see what he can do just because, again, when was the last time, like, he never had one the next day. So I'm curious to see what he can do. That's my only stance on it before anyone gets mad. I'm not saying it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. I'm just saying it'd be nice to, you know, actually see him have something because he didn't for a very long time and uh, didn't help him at all. Whose fault is it? I mean, Vince, who, I mean, who knows? But him having a gimmick, him having a gimmick is a good thing. So see where they go with it going forward. Hopefully less weird, but we shall see. Roxanne Perez defeated Cora Jade in a weapons wild match. Was it the greatest thing? Wasn't the worst? And we know, you know even Booker, I believe, was mentioned Cora, you know, and coming from Frontier and the weapons and everything that she has experience with. And what by no means stole the show. No one expects it to steal the show. Like if you expected their match to steal the show, sheesh, something up with you. I will say that uh, <laughs> that bump off the platform, whatever the hell that was. It was awkward looking to me, so I'm sure it was awkward looking to everyone else. I don't even know what to, yeah, call that. I mean, they both they did it safe, and they both got back, you know, up and carried on, finished the match. But you know, it just looked awkward as hell to me. But glad they got up. Glad Roxanne got the win again. It was one of those I wasn't sure because Roxanne's so over, she could afford to lose, but Core didn't need to win. But if she did, yeah, it was one of those, and they put on a good one. So congratulations to them. And liked Roxanne's ring gear, liked it all. They didn't have, you know, anything stupid happen, which is the big key to it. Let the two of them just go at it. And they did the best with what they can again. It wasn't one of the high spots, but look where it was in the show. So pretty sure no one expected it to be the greatest thing ever. But the real question is, I mean, what do both of them do going forward now? Title picture. I mean, there's only one woman's title. So I'm curious. Let's go with intrigued. I'm intrigued by the possibilities going forward for both of them. Because, you know, I don't see main roster for either of them at all. Just, but how do they, you know, play the game and throw themselves into the title picture and all that? Or does one just take a break and then come back, you know, a month or so down there and just maul someone? Yeah, it's a really, a really good question. A lot of possibilities with them. I just want to see, you know, Roxanne and them just keep wrestling and getting bumps and reps and experience because that's what will make them even better. We were talking about last night on the Twitter world. That's what everyone needs. I don't like Joe Gacy. That happened too. So hoping the GYV would be back after Vince was gone, but now we'll see who the other person is. Probably something dumb on Tuesday, but we'll see. A match that I was really looking forward to that I, st- I want to say still delivered, but you could see there was a, uh, you know, the gimmicky, th- yeah, it's, wasn't their stick. They weren't, you know, comfortable with doing it yet altogether. Still a good match. Um, I'm not going to go and say it wasn't a good match. Obviously, they put on a good match and everyone was safe. But you can see at times that Julius looked legitimately pissed after getting some of those hits. There are some things that just looked, you know, awkward here and there. But again, they're both very young in all of this. And it was an ambulance match. There aren't too many of them. You know, if you're not comfortable with it. You can tell, I think they can get very much so more comfortable with it. You know, they just have to have more experience with how often you have, you know, ambulance matches in that. But I thought it delivered regardless of everything. And it was one of those I thought, you know, I felt like he was going to win because they're just not ready to break up the Creed. Yet. And then it was if he loses, Julius leaves too and goes with him and they go to the main roster. But I didn't think they were ready for it. And I think last night, you know, showed some of that. I'm just curious as to what they're going to do with 
Damon going forward because obviously the Creed Brothers tag team you keep going and doing their thing with Diamond Mind and doing all that. What do they do with Damon going forward? I uh, don't see like from the loss. I mean, does he keep going after the Creeds? Does he try to throw his name in the hat for a North American Championship? Do they just let him go out there and have really good, you know, try to put on really good matches every week and just build experience and more experience and more experience and more experience, which I think couldn't hurt him at all. And do all that. I just don't think he's after the loss. He's obviously not going to be in a title picture. So curious to see how they're going to just throw it together to make sense of it all going forward. Because again, he can't come off of you know that loss <clears throat> if they do take them away from each other completely, go directly into a title program. Especially not him. This age is like he's just not there yet to be able to do these. And like a Seth Rollins, who can lose one night and win a title the next. You know, it doesn't work. That way with him, I don't think he'll ever be to that level. No offense to him. My time will tell. But I am intrigued to see what they do with that. We had the women's championship match. And again, whole haunted house thing, whatever. Castle, whatever. Toxic Attraction needs more acting. Yeah, they could use some help there. Did it look like Loomis's? Yes. Looks like Dexter's house castle thing from years ago. I'm okay with that. I did like all the comments. People saying, well, didn't you dive out of the car after Alba drove off with Mandy before she got to the thing? I know. If you think about it, it really does make sense. Why didn't they? But you know, overall, for what they were trying to do, I'd say it was a success. Uh, again, once they throw the haunted house and all the castle and all that stuff in there, you know it's automatically going to be you know, weird to wrap it all together. And again, Toxic Attraction shows up somehow, pulls the ref out, gets the double team. Alba's done. Do they do that? Keep you know? Do they keep doing that going forward? Yeah, that's the real question. Yeah, Alba and Mandy, with, yeah, find a way to keep Toxic out, even though they never will. But do they have them doing? Yeah, Alba doing that. Do they? I mean, I don't see them sending her to the main roster, and you know, NXT Europe isn't you know a thing yet. So obviously, she's not going to go there. You know, are they just keeping her here until that starts and then she can go help build that roster? Like, that's the big one. Like, what do they do with Alba after this? Because, again, only the one woman's championship. They can put her in matches and make, you know, account for something and all of that. She can still stay very active. They do the stories, right? They don't need stories. They just have really good matches. And those are the stories. Like, we used to do in the Attitude Era when people weren't involved in title pictures. Everything mattered. Like, they could do that. Again, I just want to know, if, you know, do they keep it with her? Is she moving over to Europe once it's ready? Like, there's a lot of things I'm not sure about, but you can tell me what you think in the comments section. Yeah, because I did enjoy her work, you know, Kaylee Ray over as the NXT UK women's champion. Like, I, I did enjoy what she did there. She had really you know, put on good matches. And what she got here, I was like, yeah, what they're not having. No, <clears throat> she's not beating Mandy. And here we are. She hasn't beaten Mandy. So, you know, I was right. But I'm very confused as to who's gonna, you know, be next, which then gets us on to the main event, which I might add, I thoroughly, you know, enjoyed it. I thought it was gonna be a stellar match for the night. And guess what, everybody? It was. It really, really was. I thought they did a fantastic job with this match. And I mean, we all know what Ilya could do and JD and all of them can do. So obviously it's not like it was a big shocker, but they definitely started on a bang and ended on a bang. The crowd was into it. Everyone got their stuff in there. Braun still got to hold on to his championship because, again, I looked down and said, I don't see, like, what do they do with them? What do they do with them going forward? Now is the real question, but they could throw them in North American title stuff and all of that. Uh, maybe Ilya on the main roster at some point because yeah, I could see him fitting in with all those guys, I mean, just look at the matches he's had with Gunther, a.k.a. Walter, back in the day for the NXT UK Championship. Like, they went to war, and it was very believable and good. So I could see him doing that. I just don't know. And I will say that every time they show JD from, like, you know, this angle up, from, like, upper peck up, I literally just shoulders not think he looks like a little person. No offense to little people. He really does look tiny in all of that. But totally delivered. Definitely ended the show on a bang. That's the way you want it to go. And Braun... Just from when he first started tonight, you could see all the growth and you know everything he's learned and picked up throughout the way with the way he's doing like all these matches with everybody. You could say, the, you know, oh yeah, he's had a bunch of good matches. Look who he's been in the ring with. 
Yeah, but they can only get you so far. He has improved. Is he the greatest thing ever? No. Can he be there? Yes. And was that a good way to end the show? Oh, hell yes. I was very, very okay with that being the ending. You know, again, start on a bang, end on a bang. They were still good in the middle. Now, we didn't expect like bangers to be coming from the stuff in the middle. And really, if you just took Joe Gacy and that stupidity away, and Last Legends of Quincy out there, I probably would have enjoyed the middle a little bit more. I thought she, Shotzi pulled off a great Beetlejuice. Yeah, it's, I don't get Quincy. Don't like him before anyone throws anything because of this, that, and the other. I just don't like it. It's not my cup of tea. I don't get it. I mean, Super DV, very little effort thrown into the costume last night. Like, it's like they're trying to do it, but half-assing it. And, you know... Not a big fan of half assing things. It's just not my cup of tea, but he can still turn me around. Everyone always can. I always say there's some people that can't, and they do. So we'll see what he does with that. But overall, good night. Uh, and again, people show they need more time and to figure stuff out. Even Apollo on that list, gimmick wise, needs to figure it out. Julius Creed, you know, still could have more time. Roxanne, court, like it showed, you know, people are really good, but we also got, you know, see people get opportunities. You know, they had Roxanne go over. We had Wesley get the title. Like, there's a lot of things going forward that they could do and keep going with it and just build on momentum just as long as they keep Quincy away from me. I'll be okay. Sorry. Again, it's just like half ass done. Like, they're trying to push him as the same thing. You look at it and you're going, because it's just not nicely done to me. So, good night for the brand. Glad Wes got the title, you know, proved himself as a single because, again, it has been a bad year no matter how many times they say it. And they said it a lot last night. It really has been a pretty garbage year for him. So, you know, the whole tag team and everything else. So, you know, overall, I put that in the high Bs somewhere around there. Because, you know, again, there was still some really ugly stuff. And there would be a low A. It was a good night overall. They did a good job. They accomplished what they had to, even if Quincy and Lash kind of was the lowest point for me, actually, if you think about it. Like, that was the low light of the night for me. And again, I get what they're trying to do. There's one of them reminds me of a certain someone that used to be in my life at times. And the other one, I just think they're half-assing and doing it. And I just don't enjoy it. Because I don't think they're going full tilt into it, which, you know, it might be a different world than people that had characters like that before. But you can also get away with a lot more shit nowadays with stuff like that. But again, comment, you know, let me know what you think. If you're listening on Anchor, leave a voice message. You know, share it out to people, follow along on all the socials and the platforms that I'm on. And I'll be back with, you know, some shorts here throughout the week. So thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And until next time, peace.